France sees itself as a secular, colorblind democracy. But election after election, France's minorities have found themselves used to drum up votes for all parties. Most vitriol is reserved for France's Muslim community, leading the imam of the Grand Mosque to say anti-Islam rhetoric in this year's French presidential election risks creating a spiral of hatred, similar to the discourse against Jews in the 1930s. Welcome to the program, I'm Shuri Ghosh. Questions on immigration, multiculturalism and religion have featured prominently in the presidential election race. Eric Zamor, former journalist and TV star, has called unaccompanied child migrants thieves, murderers and rapists. He's called Islam the enemy within and is an open proponent of the great replacement conspiracy theory, the claim that white European populations are being deliberately replaced via non-white immigration. Meanwhile, a viral video of the brutal police beating of a black musician led to widespread protests last year, just days after police violently cleared a migrant camp in central Paris. But politicians refuse to accept that racism exists within the police force or society. France has a long history of universalism, with all citizens being seen as equal. It doesn't keep records of its ethnic minorities, making race problems invisible. But with the weaponization of racism and Islamophobia, where does this leave Muslims and minorities? So let's introduce today's guests here in London. We have Philippe Marlier, Professor of French and EU Politics. Also in London, Akila Chatita, founder of Coaching by Akila. She left France six years ago after experiencing racism and discrimination for wearing the hijab. And in Santa Barbara, in the US, we have Jean Beeman, Professor of Sociology at the University of California. Welcome to all of you. Um, Akila, let me start with you because I'm interested in, in your experience. You were born and raised in France, but you left because of how you were treated when you decided to wear the hijab. Yes, that's right. So I was born and raised in France. I went to school in the French you know, School of Republic, as they call it. But I felt very much ostracized uh, because of my religion, which is the reason why I decided to go to different countries within Europe. So I first went to Germany and then to the UK, where I settled down six years ago and where I had way more opportunities, I'd say, with my background and was um, considered as, uh, you know, my peers with the same uh, types of skills. But in France, it was, it was open discrimination, was it? You were made very aware of the fact that it was because you were wearing the hijab that you were treated like that. Yes, indeed. Um, I was even told by some classmates when I started wearing it in business school that, oh, you know, we thought you were educated and, you know, an open-minded girl. Why did you decide to wear it? Well, exactly because I am educated and open-minded. I had teachers refuse me coming to a session with a big French uh, cosmetics brand because they'd say, they said, you know, my hijab would be a barrier. Uh, and funnily enough, I did attend the class with my hijab and the cosmetics company was happy to hire me later on. Um, but it's funny to see that a teacher would expect a company not to accept me because I was wearing, wearing the, the headscarf. You know, that, that, and, that's incredible. Yes, I mean, so what is, when you look at the election in France, what is your view on the election? Are there any parties who are standing with minority communities and addressing the concerns that people like yourself have? Um, to be honest, I don't feel like there is. Um, I myself have a background which is more, you know, towards the left, uh, but I've heard and read uh, instances where, you know, uh, politicians from the left have been Islamophobic, have shown xenophobia as well towards people from my background. So I'm North African, Algerian. And um, I would say they kind of, they're kind of all the same to me. No one is really endorsing the cause of Muslims openly because we know that the French public wouldn't like it. Right. Uh, Jean, you wrote about the uh, children of North African immigrants in France. It's called Citizen Outsider. Is that how ethnic minorities feel in France? They're, out, they're outsiders, even if they're born and raised there? 
Yes, absolutely. So a lot of what Talia said really was came out in my own research and conversations with adult children of Maghreban or North African immigrants in France, really feeling that even though they're born and raised in France, that they're educated in French in the, in the school of the Republic, as Italia says, they're still remain or kept on the margins of mainstream French society and they're never treated as if they're French as other French people. Philippe, uh, there is no doubt that the far right has gained traction in France. How is that influencing the campaign? Are minority issues being talked about, for example? Yes, they are talked about, but in a bad way, unfortunately, mm -hmm. i.e. Uh, when they are talked about, it is, uh, again, to uh, try to discriminate against uh, the Muslim population in general, uh, to identify that population as, as a, an, an alleged threat to the, the French community at large. So, yes, of course, when you have two far-right candidates, which are currently in second position and fourth position, one of them, Marine Le Pen, probably will qualify for the second round. Of course, this is a sign, this is evidence that there is a problem with, with racism and Islamophobia in general in French society. And I think uh, I was watching uh, President Macron this morning on the campaign trail at last. And he was stopped by a journalist about and asked a question about the far right is about to qualify for the second round yet again. And the polls are showing that the gap is narrowing between you and Le Pen. And Macron said, of course, well, I don't trivialize uh, far right ideas. I fight the far right. Well, unfortunately, under Macron's presidency, the far right has got uh, stronger and its ideas have become mainstream. So there is really a problem. With, with the far right in French society. And Macron is, to a large extent, responsible for that. Yeah, so pundits yeah. are expecting a, um, a, uh, the second round to be Marine Le Pen uh, against Macron. Um, who then should uh, minorities vote for, Philippe? Uh, who are they voting for? Are they voting? Uh, uh, is there a candidate that they should be voting for? I think traditionally the vote of ethnic minorities is quite split. Depends what type of ethnic minority you're talking about: Muslims, uh, Jews, Protestants, uh, Catholics. Uh, it, it, it varies. But I think in general, uh, historically, uh, the left has uh, captured a lot of their votes, but very much less so in the past elections. Because as as Akila was uh, was saying earlier, there's a kind of a uh, that population is now quite disillusioned about about the left. The left has done very little to integrate uh, further that, that population to make sure that it is it be treated on a par with other French citizens. Racism is there, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism as well is there. So there's a lot of issues. And of course, when you come from an ethnic minority, you live in the outskirts of a big city in a fairly deprived area, your working class, your ethnic minority, there's very little incentive in these to go out uh, in uh, about 10 days time and go out and vote for any party, including the left. OK, so let's talk about President Macron, who's uh, pursued a number of policies to tackle what he calls Islamist separatism. He's closed mosques, he's dissolved Muslim-led organisations. Uh, this is how he sees it. What we have to tackle is Islamist separatism. It is a conscious, theorized, politico-religious project, which takes shape through repeated deviations from the values of the Republic, often resulting in the constitution of a counter-society. Akila, let me come to you. Uh, how do you think President Macron's views on French Muslims impact on their voting decisions? I mean, his idea of what he calls an acceptable form of Islam, which is very alienating to a lot of Muslims. Exactly. I think you said the word alienating. And that's how I've felt uh, mostly. So I myself, if I was able to vote uh, back, you know, five, six years ago, I would have voted for Macron. Uh, but from what I've realized now is that he's very much playing into the game of separating the French communities, the French minorities and putting everyone against each other, especially Muslims against the rest of uh, the French population. So I feel really sad, you know, as a French Muslim, as a, you know, a product of uh, France, um, I feel sad that I am considered as 
someone, because I wear the hijab, someone who's kind of wearing a flag of uh, anti-republicanism, uh, when really I was brought up, you know, in that school, I went to the best schools in France because of my level and my hard work, but I end up being rejected, even politically, it doesn't give me uh, the willingness to participate anymore. Uh, that's why I kind of, you know, left France. I wanted to, I was tired of being, a, you know, uh, putting effort and energy into proving myself as a French Muslim. And I think that's what most of French Muslims are experiencing right now. They're thinking I have uh, skills, I'm clever, I, w I am, you know, headhunted by companies in other countries. I'm just going to go there now and, you know, live my life to the fullest instead of being uh, reduced here in France. Jean, isn't that one of the, the, the biggest problems with French politics right now? Philippe was saying that, you know, the government's own policies uh, and the way President Macron sees uh, Islam and minority communities has very much encouraged the rise of the far right. Yes, absolutely. And I think to say that point more strongly, it's encouraged a kind of centering of far right discourse. So now, you know, people, you don't need someone like Le Pen to articulate a sort of far right discourse when that just becomes the mainstream way of understanding French society. And again, I think just to kind of echo what Akila says, I, you know, that further creates the sort of separation and divides and divisions within French society between people who can be considered French, who are typically white, I think we have to talk about white supremacy in this, in this discussion, and you know, non-white individuals, including Muslims and other ethnic racial minorities. Okay, let's look at some of the issues which are affecting uh, ethnic minorities. Um, Philippe, you were talking about the two uh, far-right uh, candidates. So you have Eric Zemmour, who is vowing to ban immigration and send back 100,000 immigrants to Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. You've got Marine Le Pen uh, promising to heavily reduce immigration numbers. Um, one of the problems is that these sentiments do appeal to a section of the French population, or at least they play on the fears of a section of the French population. How is that shaping the election campaign? Uh, it plays on the fears, and of course there are people who are ready to believe it in those in those ideas. And it, it is, of course, shaping the, the campaign. And if we have, we, if it, again, and we seem to be on course for a rerun of 2017, i.e. the same uh, contest and a second decisive ballot between Le Pen and, and Macron, uh, rest assured, unfortunately, that again, those issues w will crop up. Instead of discussing, you know, socioeconomic issues, the state of public services, you know, uh, public freedoms, and there's a lot to say on those, on the, in, the, in those areas. And this is really, Unfortunately, the kind of vicious circle in which French politics has, has been, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, in for, for the past uh, years now, an inability really to go beyond, to, to, to really accept, in fact, that France is, like Britain, a multicultural society. The objective multicultural, by the way, is really not, not used. You know, it's, it's a kind of taboo word. You can't say that France is multicultural. Uh, what is always put forward is, is the fact that uh, France is a republic, can't be divided. And in order to be part of the national community, you have to abide by certain, you know, rules, practices, traditions, even what you wear, and, and of course, the, uh, Aquila is, is there to, 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 to make the point about it. It's a sort of ongoing issue about the wearing of the, of the hijab in, 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 in society, in public places, has been an issue. So, of course, it is shaping uh, the debate. And uh, it is very unfortunate, once again, that Macron, and he seems to be waking up, but really it's five to midnight, that now the gap is narrowing. Le Pen seems now to come across as a fairly moderate candidate, which she isn't in absolute terms. She only comes across as a fairly moderate candidate, although her program on immigration, Islam, remains the same, because next to her you've had now this absolute extremist called Eric Zemmour, who really absolutely uh, speaks uh, very frankly and tells exactly things as has really they come into, into his mind. Well, and I mean, he's very him, insulting, instance, isn't it? He's extremely insulting about minority communities, extremely insulting yes. about... He's been uh, convicted on, on race hatred, and yet his rhetoric is forming part of a campaign. And the problem is that the more you hear these messages over and over repeated, the more they 
see, become, come into the mainstream. It is, is, I, I don't know how, what any of the guests feel about this, whether there is a, a problem with a really quite um, extreme uh, narratives being heard over and over again so that they become more acceptable in inverted commas. Is, is, is that a problem? Uh, they've become acceptable in in, uh, in the mainstream media to start with, which is ex absolutely incredible that, you know, in the mainstream media, you could give the floor to a man like Zemmour, whom you, you, you sort of reminded of uh, the audience that he's been already um, um, condemned twice by, by French justice for uh, incitement to, to racial hatred. And still he goes on. And uh, fairly unopposed when he goes on TV and he's able to develop uh, extreme theories such as the Great Replacement, which is a white supremacist theory, you know, according to which allegedly the uh, mass immigration coming essentially from, from North Africa and the rest of Africa would uh, swamp into France and replace uh, the indigenous population at, at some point. So that's really what he says, quite unopposed. And... Um, so all this sort of very extremist ideas, which I think still a few years ago would have been completely set aside, uh, they wouldn't wouldn't have been any platform for, for for those extremists to voice them. Now, are part of of the public discussion. And your thoughts on that, Jean? Yeah, I would completely agree with everything Philippe said. I would just also add that you know we think about the ways that the words of Zamora, the discourse of Zamora, have become mainstream. We also have to consider the way that Macron himself has also been part of this mainstreaming, and also particularly when we think about you know his denial of systemic racism in France and how that that kind of rhetoric also harms France's minorities as well. Yeah, and, and this is something that, you know, other candidates are also getting in, involved in. So this question on whether far-right rhetoric is becoming more mainstream, you've got Valérie Procresse, who is the centre-right candidate for the Republicans' party, and here's what she had to say on fighting Islamism. Today, we have to give ourselves the means to fight against this Islamism, these preachers of hate who sell books that are contrary to the Republic. Akila, is it worrying that even centre-right candidates are adopting the same narrative as the far-right? Yes, to me it is worrying and that's why I'll come back, you know, to, to what I said initially is that, you know, a few years back I could happily vote for the left or towards the centre, but nowadays you see that even the centre-right, centre with Macron are already having discourse, you know, that the far-right used to have a few years back. And um, this kind of um, vulgarization, like spreading of the narrative of, you know, the great replacement and everything has kind of covered now all sectors, all sides of, you know, the politics in France. And I feel sorry for the people who hear over and over again through the news, people who are non-Muslims, who don't know any Muslims around them, because they'll end up believing these people who are seemingly trustworthy for them because they belong to a center party or a left party. So, I mean, uh, Akila, who should Muslims vote for? Because it, it looks likely that the second round is going to be Macron versus Marine Le Pen. I mean, all, clearly, I presume most Muslims would not vote for Marine Le Pen, but, but Macron doesn't seem to be that much a better option for Muslims. Yes, it's, it's true. Um, I'd say in this case, we're kind of stuck to, and we have to choose, uh, you know, the least worse option, which would be Macron. But again, maybe some uh, cynics uh, would say, you know, vote for Marine Le Pen, see how she goes, see if she can actually put things into place, the things she's saying, because some of them, even the plans in terms of immigration uh, and Islam are not feasible. And there are some structures within the French society and the French political system that would prevent her from doing it. So, I don't know, people have to choose. Either you're a cynic or you're trying to save, <laughs> save the day. Um, Philippe, I want to come back to something you said a little er earlier on. You were tying in um, the, the candidates playing on the fears of voters um, because of security threats, because uh, minority communities were seen as being a problem, being a threat. Um, Clearly, security is a big issue in France. France has suffered a string of terror attacks, uh, some of them carried out by Muslims. Uh, how, is, how is that feeding into the campaign? Well, of course, 
as you just said, terror attacks are a reality, and France was struck several times very, very, uh, very dearly by, by, by them. So they ought to be taken seriously. But here, in general, we're not talking about that kind of threat. We're talking about a more elusive uh, type of threat, which is about a community being uh, sort of identified at large, a Muslim community, uh, which on the whole is, of course, the law abiding citizens uh, just go about their, their own lives and uh, don't do anything wrong. But because they're Muslims and because, of course, they follow certain uh, certain certain practices uh, linked to, to, the, to their religion, uh, this is deemed unacceptable by, by some in French society. So they're using notably uh, laïcité, which is the uh, sort of word used for French style secularism. Of, of course, in France, uh, there's a law separating the, the, the churches and, and the state. And they're using that a law of 1905, a very important law. Uh, and a very important notion called laïcité to to basically ostracize uh, constantly Muslims, and they're doing it. If you think, for instance, on of the so-called separatism bill, which was passed a year ago by the, the government, this is really a kind of uh, uh, this is evidence, really, that uh, a centre-right government, uh, Macron's uh, government, uh, has largely implemented some of the ideas and proposals of the far right, because when you look at that bill, it's really making uh, the Muslim population in general uh, a potential threat, whatever they do. And what they do in general is nothing wrong. So I think, of course, that creates a, a climate where um, the Muslim isn't seen as a, as a sort of a, a first class citizen, but, but as someone who constantly departs from the, the community in terms of practice, beliefs, and, and values, which of course isn't the case. Is there, I'm interested to know if, if, there, if any candidates or any political parties uh, talk about things like white supremacy or, or racism in French society. Jean, was that ever your experience when you were looking into how North African immigrants were treated? No, not at all. Actually, instead, what happens is the category of Muslim is, you know, becomes a sort of catch all category for all kinds of sort of racial and ethnic difference in France. And so that's invoked, or Muslims are continually invoked as a threat to French society in the absence of talking about what I believe are the real issues, which are, you know, state racism and white supremacy in France. But unfortunately, there's no sort of political discourse to really capture, to really tackle those issues. And Akila, was there any acknowledgement that there was institutional racism in things like the police force or security forces, did anyone ever talk about that as an issue? Uh, do you mean on the news, in the media? Uh, or yeah, in the media or among uh, in political circles or, you know, was there a, a recognition that, uh, for example, the kind of racism that you faced, uh, was that seen as uh, acceptable? Was it just simply ignored or, or do they think it doesn't exist? Um, I'd say there's several occasions where you know people from the public people even within my school so directors because they've known me and they've known the you know how hard I was working at school have sided with me and have said you know that it's a shame I was being discriminated against even uh, for job um, interviews because of I was uh, wearing the hijab but I think um, from being involved even in political circles, because I was part of uh, an organi organization called um, Article 1 now, Passport Avenir, and we had one uh, presidential um, grant, and back then it was from uh, President François Hollande, who I met in person. I think there's still um, sort of a cover-up. We don't really want to speak about uh, racism, white supremacy overtly. We just want to try and change society by sugarcoating it, basically. It's just uh, ignoring what's happening because it would be too damaging um, for France to recognize that systemically it is racist. Uh, listen, we're coming towards the end of this discussion. I just want to put one final question to you, Philippe. And we've heard from, uh, from Jean, we've heard from Akila um, saying that you know, there's, there's not really any candidate that could be voted for that would be beneficial for uh, minority communities and Muslims. But what's your view? It, will the election outcome see any improvements to the lives of the Muslim community in France? It's a very divided opinion, but there's been a, a group of uh, anti-racist uh, you know, campaigners which are 
who are quite well known on the ground, particularly in the, in the Paris region, and notably in Saint-Saint-Denis, one of the poorest uh, departments in France, who have come forward lately in, in support of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, a radical left, uh, populist left uh, candidate. Mélenchon is a very interesting example because he comes exactly for that from that rep Republican uh, left, uh, who until recently didn't want to hear or use the word Islamophobia, for instance, didn't want to hear or acknowledge that there was such thing as institutionalized uh, police br brutality against uh, ethnic minorities and so on and so forth. But it's changed because his movement, uh, you find in this movement a lot of people who come from uh, the, the, the ethnic minorities. So, you know, there's a, there's a very slow evolution, but that's not, we're not there yet. Thank you very much indeed to all three of my guests, uh, Philippe Malia, Akila Chatita and Jean Beeman. Thank you. And don't forget, you can see more discussion and debates on our YouTube channel. Search for Roundtable TRT World. For now, from me and all the team here, bye-bye. Thanks for watching.